Hi, welcome back to the 3D Printing Canada YouTube channel. My name is Matthew, and today we're going to be starting a new series where we're just going to do a quick basic overview of uh, you know, what most kinds of uh, common 3D printing materials are. So for today's video, we're going to start off with the most common type of 3D printing material, and that is bog standard PLA. Let's get right into it. So in front of me here on the table, I have a bunch of different types of PLA. So we're just going to touch on kind of the, all the most common ones. Um, and then I'll quickly touch on a couple of the other um, less common ones at the end. Uh, so the most common um, type of PLA you'll see is just standard PLA. Uh, it's used by quite a lot of people and it's a great starting material. It's super easy to print. Um, doesn't require super high temperatures or a lot of cooling or anything. It's very forgiving to print, um, but uh, it turns out really nice. Uh, and you, there's lots of colors and different types you can get. So it's a great material for beginners to use. Uh, and you know, the properties aren't as great as some of the, the other materials that you can get, uh, like some of the stronger higher temp materials, stuff like that. But it's great overall for stuff that um, just more hobbyists need. The next thing I have here is PLA Plus. So the big thing with PLA Plus is that it uh, retains PLAs, um, like it's still as easy to print as PLA. Uh, it's, uh, I even most of the time will use the same printing profile for PLA or PLA Plus. I use the same temperature, everything like that. Um, it depends on the brand you're using. Some might require you change it up, but I know for most of our stuff here, I can just use the same one and it works fine. Um, but the nice thing with PLA Plus is that you get a little bit of added uh, strength and a little bit of added temperature resistance. So if you're finding that uh, you know, your PLA isn't quite as temperature resistant as you need it to be, but you don't really need to go all the way up to PETG temperature resistance, then PLA Plus is kind of your nice medium point, uh, especially if you already like printing with PLA and maybe don't like printing with PETG as much. The next one that I have here is Hyper PLA. This has been getting more and more popular recently as uh, printers have been getting faster. Um, and basically all it is is uh, normal PLA with additives to it to help it uh, melt better. Um, of course, as you print faster, uh, you need to melt more material and get higher flow rates. Uh, and sometimes with standard PLA, depending on what printer you're using, uh, you may start to reach the limitations at speeds that you're going. Hyper PLA does is it has a much higher flow rate, so uh, you can start printing at those higher speeds uh, and still get more flow rate out. Um, and in terms of surface quality, it looks great. It functions exactly the same as PLA. I've noticed sometimes the cooling is a little more iffy with it, but as long as you, you tune it properly, it, it goes no problem. Um, but yeah, so it's not super necessary if you're still using an old Ender 3 or something that doesn't go super fast, but for fast printers, it's definitely a, a good option for material to use and it could be helpful in your case. The next filament that we have here is silk PLA. So silk PLA is sometimes a little bit more tricky to print than regular PLA. Uh, it's a little more iffy with the setting sometimes, um, especially with temperatures and cooling and stuff like that. You have to dial it in a little better. It's not hard to print, um, still much easier than some other materials, but it's just not quite as easy as PLA in, in some cases. Um, but the nice thing about silk PLA is that when it finishes, it, a, it has a beautiful uh, shine to it. Not reflective, but just shiny. Uh, so the parts, I usually use silk PLA like if I'm printing a, a GIF for somebody or something like that, just because it, it looks pretty and it, it, uh, people are usually impressed by it. Um, but yeah, it's generally not as strong as PLA, so uh, for purposes where you need strength, it's not a good material, um, but it's better for just printing little knickknacks and things like that, because it, it has a nice surface finish. This filament, uh, this is wood-filled PLA. Uh, so there's a lot of different kinds of wood-filled PLA. You can get, um, you know, different woods, things like that. Uh, I forget exactly which one this one is. It might be oak or something like that. Um, but basically all it is is it's normal PLA and then they put a bunch of wood fibers into it. 
Uh, so uh, when it prints, you have, it feels similar to a, a carbon fiber finish on your prints almost, just a little, not bumpy, but just a weird surface finish. Um, it smells like wood when you print it, which is pretty cool. Um, but the other nice thing is that you can stain it as well with uh, wood stain. So if you wanted, um, like I had to uh, print a head for a bed once that was made out of wood. So I printed it out of the wood PLA and then I was able to stain it to the same color as the rest of the, the bed. Um, so that, that looked good uh, and it worked really well. Um, so it's about the same strength as PLA. Uh, one important thing to note is you will want to have a, at least a stainless steel nozzle to print this stuff because it will wear through brass nozzles. And I usually recommend uh, using a 0.6 nozzle to print this as it usually ends up a little better. PLA comes in a lot of different types, colors, everything. It's a super versatile material. Um, so this barely scratches the surface of what you're actually able to get. Uh, a couple that come to mind are, you know, matte PLA, you have um, thermal PLA, so it changes colors, you have foaming PLA, you have, um, what's another one? Uh, you have your dual color, tricolor, PLA, everything. So the list just goes on and on and on. So <laughs> we don't want to make like a four hour video, but um, these are kind of the, the big ones that you'll see here. So just to recap, um, this is all PLA. Um, PLA is a great material to use because it's you know easy to print, um, lower temperatures, so it's accessible to a lot more printers. Um, it's not toxic as well, which is a big thing. It's deemed safe to, to be around. You don't need an enclosure or anything. Um, and there's a lot of different types of it, a lot of availability for colors, uh, different uh, surface finishes, um, different applications with like white, lightweight PLA, things like that. Um, and it's just a great beginner material to use overall because it's very easy to get into. Um, so yeah, that's been a quick overview of different types of PLA. Um, next time we're going to move on to PETG. So make sure to uh, comment, like, and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can see that one when it comes out. All right, we'll see you next time.